Union nurses are at it again. A big California union representing more than 3,000 nurses at 10 hospitals protesting proposed cuts to their benefits. And they're, they're striking for the seventh time in a little more than a year. Mark Mix is the National Right to Work Committee president, and he warns that the union is setting the stage for a dangerous situation. What do you mean, Mark? Well, that's right, Tom. You know, these uh, union officials force workers off the job. Many of the workers don't want to walk off the job. But if they do, if they do go back to work, they can be fined and disciplined by their union. In fact, we represented nurses in Minnesota who wanted to take care of their patients. They were forced to cross the picket line, and then they were disciplined by the union. We actually had to represent them and get them out of what would be fines and disciplinary action for actually trying to take care of their patients. Uh, by going to work, crossing the picket line, essentially. Exactly. The, the other problem with this, and I've seen these strikes, and like, it, it's amazing how often they come along. It would seem, why so often? It seems like most unions, they get a collective bargaining agreement and it sticks for at least a few two or three years. Well, it's a negotiating strategy. You know, they announced these 24 and 48 hour strikes. It's happening more as kind of this these flash mob strike mentality that keeps management off their, you know, on their heels. And so now the management has to go out and find a way to take care of patients while the union officials make demands. It really is a difficult situation and it's something that's developed since 1974 when nonprofit ho hospitals got into the bargaining business. Uh, you know, prior to that, it had been illegal to bargain at nonprofit hospitals. Well, uh, let me just talk about about nurses in general. I mean, we have all kinds of critical jobs in our country that you cannot strike, whether it's the air traffic controllers or some other example. Nurses seem like they would fit that bill. Well, that's right. In, in 1946, when the American Nurses Association decided they were going to adopt a bargaining strategy, a 1947 exempted nonprofit, including nonprofit hospitals, from bargaining. It didn't get repealed until 1974, but that was after the 1966 strike in San Francisco that where more 30 hospitals uh, were struck by unions, and that paved the way for passage of a law that allowed strikes and bargaining in the hospital sector and the nonprofit hospital sector back in 1974. All right. Now, the, the nurses, and I'm familiar with Northern California, California, and they've been they've been very aggressive. But you were telling me just before we started during the break that the, this is a national issue. That's right. We have cases right now in Florida. We have a case, we have cases in Texas. We have cases uh, against Tenet and HCA and Kaiser and Sutter, who are all the big health care providers in Northern California. Basically, what they're doing is they're leveraging management to get what is called a neutrality agreement. And uh, the management agrees to unionize employees without a secret ballot election by card check. And now, once they get them organized, then they come back and leverage them at the bargaining table. And that's what's happening here in California. So shame on the management of the hospitals. Absolutely. Absolutely. But it's a it's a no win situation. I mean, it's a really difficult thing. The corporate campaign that's waged against these companies is is a death by a thousand cuts. They come at you from all different angles, from religious groups, so-called religious groups, uh, community groups, financial groups. They go to your bankers, your customers yeah. and they leverage you. And then they they're, they're very good at what they do. And, and look, I don't blame the unions for wanting to go out and try and get as much as they can without killing the golden goose. But the golden goose is going to change. It's going to be a government program, the Obamacare program. How is that going to impact collective bargaining nurses and all these things that they're asking for? Or is this a precursor to where they're trying to get it while they can. I think that's right. I think the Obamacare, the full implementation of the Obamacare is going to lead to a massive unionization drive in the healthcare sector. Uh, we wrote about this in 2009 prior to the passage of the law. If you actually read the 2,000 plus page piece of legislation, there are numerous opportunities for organized labor to leverage themselves on behalf of healthcare providers across the country. And so this is preparation for that. Well, if you're a union uh, leader and you're thinking well wait a minute this is going to be we're going to be working for this hospital but the hospital is basically a government program then basically they're negotiating for a government deal. Exactly right. We actually like have the a, public employees. Do. Yeah, that's right. We actually have a case at the U.S. Supreme Court right now that touches on this issue. We're representing a home health care provider, a woman that takes care of her own child in her home in Chicago, who's forced to pay fees to the union in order to take care of her own child. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and this is because she takes a Medicare stipend as a supplement to help her take care of her own child. But uh, then Governor Rob Blagojevich and Pat Quinn have said, you got to be paid dues to the union in order to take care of your own child. Where that case is at the Supreme Court right now. Uh, I, I'll never understand the law because that seems like common sense. The judge would throw it out, but I'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Yeah. Mark Mix, thank you very much for bringing us up to date. Tom, my pleasure. Thank you. You bet. You bet. Well, forget the fiscal cliff. Get ready for the climate cliff because if the global warming alarmists get their way, a tax is coming that will push everyone right over the edge.